what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Tony Horton, Baby Einstein, founder Julie Clark, um, Atari founder, and many, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today's episode, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a little bit different episode actually today. Um, I had an amazing entrepreneur, and he actually invited me to interview him uh, for his podcast, and it was so good. I said, can you, please let me release this on mine. Today's episode is brought to you by um, Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. At Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect their Dream 100 clients and referral partners, and we help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. Um, you know, as people have listened, if you've listened to this before, podcasting is much more personal to me and it was inspired by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor and him and his brother were concentration camps in Nazi Germany and were the only members to survive. But his legacy lives on because the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him, which you can watch on my about page. So yes, podcasting will help your business. It's been the best thing for my business and my life in general, but it helps you and your guests leave a legacy. So if you have questions, um, I believe you know any business should have a podcast. So if you have questions, you can email us support at rise25media.com or learn more, go to rise25.com. John and I made a video and we even left in the outtakes. So now check out today's episode. Hey everybody, it's Ed O'Keefe here, your host of the Wake Up Minute and founder of Wake Up Foods, um, where you'll hear from the world's top experts, thought leaders in health, entrepreneurship, and mind-bending athletes of all ages to inspire you to be your best self every single day. Um, I'm super excited because I have a good friend of mine, Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, who's done thousands of interviews with successful health experts and leaders in leaders in entrepreneurship and CEOs. Um, so today's one of those episodes where we're flipping the script and he will be interviewing me. So I'm super excited because I love talking <laughs> not only about what we do, but also about our mission, about whatever questions Jeremy's gonna ask me. Now, before we get started, I wanna tell you real quick, today's episode is brought to you by my company uh, that I'm so proud of, Wake Up Foods. Um, let me tell you a little bit about this. Wake Up Foods was born out of necessity. Uh, my wife and I have seven kids, and as many of you may or may not know, I'm the 12th of 13 kids. So the idea of having healthy, clean foods that also taste great was not even on our radar, was not an option growing up, and so I wanted something that was not only healthy for my family, but also for myself as an adult athlete who wants to live long, live well, um, but the fact is it has to taste great or else my kids wouldn't eat it and I knew it wouldn't be something that we could uh, make available to everybody. So I created a 100% plant-based, allergen-free food brand called Wake Up Foods. Um, our most popular product are the ready-to-eat waffles and I have some here today that I'm gonna be eating on the uh, interview um, because I'm so proud of them. But anyhow, my family and I can't go a day without eating at least uh, four of them personally. They're that good. Um, we have chocolate maple blueberry, uh, original, uh, the original waffle, and then there's always a mystery waffle. Jeremy, I've never, uh, I don't even know if you knew this. I did not. After people buy, we have a mystery waffle uh, that is a mystery flavor. The only time you can purchase it is uh, after you buy any of our other flavors um, with only, only nine uh, or less ingredients made with oats, chia, flax, date powder, uh, pea protein, uh, you're getting real fuel for the day, zero crashes, zero refined sugar or ingredients, and most importantly, for sustainability or staying on anything, it tastes unbelievable. Um, I recruited a world-class chef, uh, who I'll talk a little bit about today, Chef Eric, that is 100% plant-based, who is on a mission to help families and kids eat healthier. And I want to add, actually, and he's also an athlete, so he, was, he would do 100-mile uh, bike races, so he built a the nutrient profile uh, to fit endurance athletes as well as actually any kind of athlete. Um, but one of his big missions was that he had, has a child with a food allergy. Um, so going plant-based is phenomenal. 
not only for you, but also for the planet. And by the way, let me just tell you this, because um, you don't have to be 100% plant-based to love Wake Up Waffles. I'm not 100% plant-based. We like to say we're plant-focused. Um, but anyhow, because of all the food allergies and health issues, it was, very, it was mandatory for us to create products free of gluten, soy, dairy, uh, wheat, eggs. Um, trying to see if I miss anything. But anyhow, as a Wake Up li uh, Minute listener, I highly suggest you stop by our uh, website at uh, www.wakeupfoods.com. <laughs> Wake That's time to eat a waffle. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And pick up a few cases of the waffles. Um, my favorites, you ask, well, I love the chocolate. I love the blueberry. And yes, the maple and the original, as well as the mystery flavor. I love them all. I can't get enough of any of them. Um, so you can go uh, to use the coupon code Wake Up. That's Wake Up, W A K E U P, to save an extra 10% on your order today. We have 100%. You can't just eat one guarantee, which means if you are not totally obsessed after you buy it, you love it, um, we'll refund you. Um, all I ask is that if you don't love it, share it with somebody that uh, will. And uh, that's it. Go to Wake Up Foods today. All right. So let's dive into Thanks, this Ed. interview where I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to pass the microphone over to you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. And um, I, you know, I'm going to have you talk about the mission and why you created this. But um, you mentioned something in the beginning yeah. that um, about growing up and um, one of 13 kids mm -hmm. and that this was not an option at that point. So what were the options? What was the, what was the morning like in the O'Keefe household with well, the kids running around? Yeah, I mean, I was on the bottom side of it, first of all. So I was a 12th of 13. Um, so kids running around is probably more, more um, in my mind, like when I think of my childhood, kids running around is a little more um, well characterized for like my existing life, right? Getting mm -hmm. kids out of the house today. Um, as, a, as I was, so I was in the lower end. So like my oldest siblings were already out of the house, you know, even had their own families. I went to college with my niece, my niece, you know, one of my best friends. Mm. But um, I mean, I think it was just really typical of a lot of other families from the perspective of at least my, I mean, that I know. I mean, I'm, I live on the South side of Chicago. Um, and, um, you know, we're just like all families where you eat what your options are, which were, you know, Lucky Charms, Cocoa Puffs, Tricks. Um, and that's what we knew. And, and frankly, that's actually what I would say most people know, right? Um, and, but I would say from the perspective of a health, like we look at like the health, per, like uh, education and IQ level, what I want to say is like, you know, um, you know, my dad was, um, was an electrician, right? Retired an electrician. Um, a good work week was he worked 40 hours so that he had the opportunity to have overtime, you know, like if work was good when he had overtime and he got paid time and a half. And, um, so that's kind of the, a lot of my brothers, same way, you know, the, um, hardworking man, blue collar mentality was my household. So the idea of um, what is healthy foods, what are allergen free foods, by the way, weren't as important back then because of the, you know, the, the uh, pesticides that's, you know, and the destruction of our soil, which is a different topic. We can talk about that later if you want. But, um, you know, I think a, the way people stayed healthy and lost weight in our ecosystem or way of thinking was restriction of ca cook calories where we're kind of fad diets were eat less is it fat free like that was more the mentality growing yeah. up you know and the availability of anything like whole foods or any of those ideas of organic uh you know gluten-free that in that gluten wasn't even existence yeah i mean really it didn't really it wasn't even really as necessary as it as it is today you know, for a whole, a, a whole host of reasons. It wasn't popularized. Yeah. Yeah. But also too, like if you've done the re like if you, if you read about like the destruction of the soil and utilizing, um, is it glyph? I always screw this word up, but it's like gly the, the, the key ingredient in Roundup, I mean, it's glyphosate or something like that. Um, factors, Zach Bush has really uh, shown the uh, spotlight on how it, 
um, by using these chemicals on the soil uh, of our crops and in our, for our farms, it actually uh, acted as a um, accelerant to gluten. And so, you know, we human beings overall have been capable of um, evolving with, you know, like say something like gluten to where um, we could <clears throat> adapt along with it. But then when you add these accelerants on it, now gluten is a much more powerful, um, I don't know if allergen, I guess you might just say, or, you know, something that irritant inside the body so that the amount of people probably, I think after like 1992, could have started before that. Um, I, I don't want to talk too far over my skis because there's experts in this that are much more qualified than I am. But just to give everybody a, a 101 picture of it, now all of a sudden the, the, the percentage of the population that has gluten intolerance just gets exacerbated, you know? Um, and I, I don't know if we took a left or right turn there, but um, none of those things were on our radar as kid or as kids. And then even as like a couple, man, I mean like growing families, I think we, Noel and I probably represent the majority of typical households where we are both collegiate athletes. We, um, had the best of intentions of, you know, preparing and filling our pantry with better foods than we had as kids. And then, you know, if you actually look at what's available, what's ready to eat and who's winning that battle and how quickly kids get introduced to sugars, um, the necessity to create product that tastes super good, um, as well as super nutritional and, and, and hopefully lifelong habits for everybody listening to this. Um, you know, it, it's really something that is born out of necessity. And, you know, I think most families, the parent guilt thing is very, very real, you know? And, yeah. um, uh, you know, we were interviewing and we were talking to Nola, like there's so many times where like, you know, you're at a store, you're buying what's convenient and easy and the guilt is there. So the first thing I want to say to everybody listening is, um, the number one way to stop you know, whether it's losing weight, whether it's being healthy, or you stop feeling guilty about things and just get proactive on things. And so Wake Up Foods was a byproduct of getting proactive instead of sitting there and um, trying to uh, change habits, let's say, you know. Yeah, I mean, in your, if you want to, uh, anyone who's watching the video, if you want to hold up and describe what you have there, um, because you know, here's the reality, uh, so, you're competing so wait, against... Wait, Jeremy doesn't, yeah, yeah. Jeremy's calling me on it. So like right, he called me and I was like, I was literally getting done from working out. And I'm like, oh, I'm starving. Let me go heat up a waffle. And so I just heated up one of our chocolate waffles, put a little organic date um, syrup on it, and then just a little bit of banana. And you know, like each serving of the waffles gives you 10 grams of protein. Um, it's, it's made with rolled oats. So the carbohydrates do not spike the blood sugar, which is people get really confused between uh, refined carbohydrates like potato chips and um, all a slew of other things that are bad for you versus ones that actually fuel you. you. It's made with chia, flax, um, and a lot of those fats not only have good protein, but they're, they're massively nutritional. Uh, the tr nutritional benefits are super, super high, and the caloric intake is super, super low. And so if there's no blood sugar spikes, you're getting tons of nutritional value, it's easy to digest. Your energy stay up. It's, it's balanced over a long period of time. We use date powder as the, um, as the sweetener. Um, and we use a little bit of uh, organic cocoa and then like for our maple, organic uh, maple sugar um, for those flavors. And then, um, but, you know, they've been, studies have been shown that those uh, date powder is, is great for people uh, like diabetics that there's, the, there's no insulin spike. So they're not on this yo-yo. They don't have to worry about their blood sugar spiking. Um, and then I love, you know, adding a little bit of fruit on top of it or with it or a lot of it. Depends on how, how you like your stuff. Um, and, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. So hold that up for a second. Himalayan pink salt. Yeah. yeah, other ingredient in here too. Yeah, it's just simple, simple waffle. I mean, actually, let me just That's the chocolate it. one. It's so much easier. Yeah, so this is it right here. So I mm. look at I told you, do, don't eat all of it so you can show it. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just amazing. Like, I mean, we had people over this weekend, they're just like, this is way too good to be healthy. I'm like, well, I don't know. 
I mean, the funny thing is when you're, when you're in the store, like you're not com- just competing against healthy foods. You're competing against, like if your kids won't eat it, it doesn't matter how healthy it is. doesn't matter. You know? It doesn't matter. And I think like um, gluten-free or any of these allergen-free products um, and then even like vegan products have always been um, stamped as they taste awful. Like, you know, like even one of our neighbors said to us, you know, it was great. She was like, actually her husband said to me, I told my wife to stop buying these gluten-free products because they taste awful. <laughs> and so now with Wake Up Foods, they have a new alternative that tastes amazing and they like it. And, um, you know, it's true. So seven so. kids. So um, I do want to have a conversation about, you mentioned Dr. Zach Bush and some of the other experts who you consider experts you follow. But talk about, you know, a morning what does that look like with seven kids? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, let me just tell you this, first of all, before we can go into like what a morning looks like, because people might be get bored, like of just even like Ed's sharing his routine. I just want to be grateful that I don't have seven kids and <laughs> that I don't no. have the chaos oh, man, get out of here. So, so what I think what's amazing is I was so lucky to meet a wife that we, we like, you know, we grew up four blocks from each other, but we were in different parishes. Like on the South side of Chicago, um, you have parishes. You don't have uh, like, you know, like, I guess that's, that's how, Hey, what parish are you from? What parish are you from? And those are like different little towns. And um, so even though we're in Chicago, we're, it's very uh, neighborhood friendly, <clears throat> amazing place to grow up. But we met each other like in college. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we knew of each other because I was one of the first guys in the area to play volleyball and all that fun stuff. Um, when volleyball wasn't super popular in the Midwest and um then we were friends and then years later <clears throat> years later we we um uh um bumped into each other at a um outdoor volleyball um uh tournament and uh i was like hey man well i didn't call her man but i was like hey no i'm moving up north and next thing you know we're next door neighbors next thing you know the girl who i was dating dumped me next thing you know we're we're hanging out all the time next thing you know uh, we're married and uh, we start our family. And um, I think one of the things about that was we both wanted, like she's one of eight, I'm one of 13. We both were like, <clears throat> let's keep going until we can't have any more. We wanted a big um, family. And I think the, so I think that's kind of like, hopefully that bleeds through the Wake Up Foods brand as we're very inclusive. Like our house, our backyard is filled with kids all the time. Our kitchen is filled with kids all the time. Um, so I think culturally, I just kind of want to share a little more background versus just teaching people about our morning. Cause I, I, I think it doesn't even scratch our surface, you know, like both athletes. Um, and I love doing hard things. I like still thinking that the best years are ahead of me instead of behind me. Um, and hopefully we model that for our kids, right? And so coming full circle from a physical fitness perspective, from a, an adventure perspective, by still doing events, like I do Jesse Isler's 29 oh, 29 Everstein events. Um, I did Kokoro Camp a few years ago. There's, um, there's a lot of things that I still want to do physically to be extremely challenging so that we model those behavioral uh, things for our, our kids. And then you go like, well, how are we doing on the food front? And so I think that's where we're trying to lead it as well. Um, and most people, Jeremy, before I talk about kids, cause I want to, I want to talk, most people I would think in life are just trying like where there's people that are hyper world-class uh, oriented people trying to, again, I have tons of friends like this, right? I mean, these are some of my favorite people in the world. Like they're pro athletes or pro coaches or they're, they're wired slightly differently. <laughs> and I say in a good way, they're great for this brand. Wake Up Foods is great for them, okay? Um, but I would say most people, like if we step back and we take all the stuff away for a moment, most people are just trying to do a little bit better today than they did yesterday, right? And they're, they're trying to, you know, they're like ducks, like that are trying to stay as cool out, in, in, in front of people, but they're paddling super hard underneath that water. And um, so one of the common questions to kind of go back all the way to the kids thing, and I could talk about that stuff in a moment, like high performance and how do we do that? And how do you like mental toughness if you want to talk about that stuff. But I think the other thing is like one of the first questions I always get is, oh, you have seven kids. 
Well, I only have, and then insert the blank. And I always stop them right there. I'm always like, I was like, don't go there with that. Like, you know, like I remember the hardest child <laughs> was the first one because you're, you're, you're trying to figure it all out. And then, you know, you piles on and I don't know, looking back, it kind of was like a, a hurricane and just, you know, <laughs> some people like say it's controlled chaos. I, I would say there was nothing controlled about it. <laughs> it was totally chaotic, you know? Yeah. So, so I don't know where, where you want to go from Yeah. That yeah. So, um, sort of what gave you the idea to start this company? I mean, cause you probably well, okay. had, yeah. I mean, so, you know, so just to give everybody some background. So. I, I, I got my nursing degree, say, 21 years ago. Came home, told my parents I don't want to be a nurse. Um, no disrespect to nursing, but I didn't want a job. I, I'm like, I'm going to go be an entrepreneur. And really, for many people that are entrepreneurs, they'll recognize this. That meant I was going to be broke for the next five years. <laughs> it, it really did. It really did. Like, you know, like, and I tried so many things. I thought I was going to, like, I read all the books about goal setting and, and visualization and, um, and you know, they talk about, you know, you tell God your plans and, and he laughs or however you want to phrase that. But, um, you know, sometimes ideas incubated, you're just, um, it's, it's not a matter of, it's just a matter of timelines, right. And sticking with it. And so my first successful business was a dental marketing company. Um, after about nine years of doing that, I rolled into the health, uh, product space, which was the health supplement business. And then a few years ago, a, a food brand, you know, I invested in a food brand that I, I really believe the tenants of the brand and, um, you know, for, for a lot of reasons it went under and I, it was one of my biggest lessons as somebody on the sidelines who was not able to, it was, it was like, I wasn't a founder. I wasn't the CEO. I was an investor. And, um, you know, when you're an investor, in most cases, you don't have control, you know, you lose control of that. So when that company went under, the, um, I really sat back and I was like, well, well, how am I going to handle this? Because this was something that I thought, I really feel like the food system needs to get disrupted. You see a lot, the plant-based movement is strong right now. Um, the agricultural movement is very, very strong. Uh, on, on both sides. I mean, there's a lot of people that um, really, 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 they can disagree about a lot of stuff, but one thing they can agree upon, whether you're a, a paleo person who wants, who really believes in sustainable uh, regenerative farming uh, with grass fed animals, or you're, you're hardcore um, vegan on the far right, you got like the both sides there, right? That probably, it'd be interesting to have both in the same room arguing. Um, but what I like to try to think is like, where do we agree on things? And there's a lot of people fighting very, very hard to, to help farmers get their farms back to properly uh, replenish our soil. And I know for people who've never, who've never um, even, this is so brand new to me, like where, like from, in, in if you look at my whole lifeline, when I first learned about this, and you can check out Farmer's Footprint, uh, I think it's .co or .us, um, but Dr. Zach Bush, Go through that documentary. It's like 20 minutes long. It'll really shift your entire thinking about why we need to restore our soil properly and give the farms back to the farmers and let them um, give us more nutritional uh, products, right? And, and, and they need to make more money. They need to make money. They can't be owned by a Monsanto or a Bayer that forces them to use chemicals that it kills our crops. Um, I didn't know any of thing about this. Now, if you take it a step further, so we talk about, I just talked about the food systems broken, talked about agriculture a little bit, and then you talk about disease, right? And so those three, those things start rolling into, um, there's a reason why in the 70s, if I might be wrong a little bit on dates, so, so, um, I'm giving a so full disclaimer on this. In the 70s, less than 4% of kids had chronic illnesses. However, right now, uh, over 46% of children have chronic illnesses. It's pretty strange. And it's crazy, right? And the only linkage back goes, like I shouldn't say the only linkage, 
one of the key linkages that Dr. Zach Bush talks a lot about. He's not the only one, by the way. There's a lot of great uh, leaders and thought leaders on these topics. But, you know, it, it goes back to um, the chemicals that were put into our foods and into our things. So, you know, you think, you, you think you're having a great tomato, <laughs> but you don't know it's filled with uh, gly, glyphosate. I, I got to practice this one here. But the Roundup, it kills everything. So there's no nutritional value in it, right? And then that, that directly goes into our gut, and that's one of the key you know, health centers of our entire body, if not the main health center of our body. So that, all this stuff, man, makes me more and more passionate about this. I mean, I'm amazed I, I didn't know any of this stuff. This is, this is stuff that is like, you know, you're trying to get 1% better, and then once you get your eyes open, I see why people have you go down this rabbit hole. You do because it it it's um it really is better for society, it's better for people, it's better for you. Like so, okay, hey, let's let's say you just want to be more plant focused. Great. Um the, the average person, the average American uh or or North American person who's on the standard American diet has less than gets less than five percent of their nutrients from uh actual whole food plants, right? Anything plant based. Well, what if you just flip that to eighty percent? Do that for seven days. Check out The Engine Diet by um, uh, Elistine. Uh, I'm going to look it up while we're talking. Great guy, um, The Engine Diet. You know, what an amazing, I mean, he, does, he was a firefighter that um, is, is transforming firefighters' lives um, because, um, um, because, you know, most firefighters, I work out with them all. They're all amazing guys. They bust each other's uh, chops every, every single second they can. Uh, the Engine 2 Diet, right, um, by Rip Esselstyn. Yeah, amazing, right? Um, Rip Esselstyn. I mean, check that out. Do something like that. Just do even half of that for seven days and just see how you feel, you know? You're going to have more energy. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to, you know, probably sleep better, get your thyroid, your adrenals, all those things uh, a little bit more, little, feel a little bit better. I am rambling on a, a diet. No, so who, who – No, see, yeah, so the mission um, – you know, you were talking about a little about the mission. So you saw that you were an investor. You didn't have control. So and the, yeah. So the mission, so full disclosure, you know, this started off as an entrepreneurial mission. Like, yeah, I believe in the tenants, believe in the direction, believe food need to be disrupted. But now everything I just talked about there, like food, agricultural disease, that just started compounding um, as we started developing product. Um, I brought on chef Eric Walnum, who, um, is a private chef for um, a lot of well-known people, he's a, but he, he's always been a private chef. And the timeline may escape me a little bit, but one of the key things he did is he did an optional course um, uh, on that I think was like six months long, but it was just focused on the plant, on plant foods. And, it, and he was an athlete. He still is an athlete. And um, um, so you know, he tried just going gluten free for he, he's a very good experimenter, uh, uh, a micro uh, tester, or what do you call it, like optimizer himself. Um, and then, um, you know, his daughter, one of his daughters had a, a dairy allergy or, and, and, you know, so their whole family is allergen free now, and he's 100% plant based, but he really uh, played a very, very vital role in, um, in the formulation, why we went allergen free um and why we chose each ingredient i mean he could speak to those probably stronger what did he say our, he'll be on our podcast as well well i think if you just start going down the um first of all i think you need a chef that has the capability of building products uh uh that are that way where a lot of guys just don't right they go for food they seek out food scientists to build things out for them almond flour is a very common um uh uh, you know, isn't very, very common. Eggs is very common in um, a lot of baking of products. And um, we just decided to go the other way, you know, and really serve an underserved market with something that we felt was very, very uh, tasted amazing. How did you meet him? Jesse Itzler. Yeah, so many of you guys may know, like if you don't know who Jesse Itzler is, he's definitely on the podcast. So I think we're, I'll have a few episodes with him in it. And I'll probably interview him every six months because he's always doing something amazing. Um, but Jesse introduced me. Like when, when I told Jesse what I was doing, Jesse's a really good friend of mine. My wife and I go to uh, uh, their house uh, with like 100 other people 
every summer for their Hell on the Hill charity event. I, I, I attend every event of his that he holds, by the way. Like he's got BYLR.co, it's Build Your Life Resume. If you do not know Jesse Etzler, by the way, everybody needs to stop, write down his name when, <laughs> when this is over. I mean, I'll even go so far as saying like, pause this interview right now and, um, and you know, make a note that you're gonna go like look up Jesse Itzler when this is over. Um, Cause he's probably one of been one of the most influential people in my life at steering me in a direction of just adventure and fun and being, I mean, he's one of the best people I know. All, some of my best friends as an adult, like, you know, you have your college best friends, you have some of your grade school best friends, you have your, like say I'm an, I got my entrepreneur best friends. But then like, I, you know, all my friends that are doing Spartan races, like one of my buddies, Rick Steele, did seven marathons and seven continents, Colin O'Brady, he just broke, I mean, he's broken like five world records. Um, and the latest couple is, you know, trekked across Antarctica, first person solo. Uh, he's been on the podcast, the wake up minute podcast. Um, I got to have him on again. He, he and a crew just like, uh, rowboated across the most dangerous parts of the seas. But these are all amazing people. The guys who are founders of health warrior, um, friends, Mark Rampolo over power plant ventures, who are helping so many companies disrupt the food system with plant-based focused uh, foods. I mean, I can go on and on and on, you know, you got to check this guy out. He's one of the coolest guys out there, you know, and to mention he, he married Sarah Blakely, who's another amazing entrepreneur, um, founder of Spanx. You know, I think of her a lot actually um, because wake up foods was to scratch your own itch. Like what, if you ever think about a company to build, just by the way, total side note for everybody listening, you know, like everyone says, oh man, I had this idea of X and, and it was to solve their own itch. Um, Sarah Blakely created Spanx out of solving your own itch. And, um, and, uh, and most importantly, I think both of them would, would appreciate just me mentioning, like they're both great parents. They have four kids, uh, four beautiful kids and um, a great role model family, you know? So anyhow, so that's how I met Sher Chef Eric to go full circle. And Chef Eric married Molly. Molly's an amazing woman. They have two beautiful kids, you know, so. So um, you and Chef Eric get together and. Oh, okay. So I'll tell you guys a funny story. You want to hear a funny story? So I, I was going a different route with the formulation. And Jesse introduced me to Chef Eric. I got on the phone with him and he said a couple things to me that I, I, was, I was left sitting there. And um, I was like, all right, can I come to your house? Like, I think it was like Sunday. It might've been Sunday. No, it was Saturday afternoon. And I was like, all right, what's your next, what's Monday, Tuesday look like in your house? And he's like, uh, let me check with Molly. I'll see you. So I flew out <laughs> early Monday morning. We spent two and a half days together talking. He was, he was cooking, making waffles and we just uh, banged it out, man. <laughs> What did he shift in you? It sounded like he said something that shifted the direction that you were going in. I think I was unaware of how powerful the plant movement really was. And I also was a little un unaware of the some of the underlying whys, right? Like, like I brought up the food, the agricultural, the, the uh, planet, the, there's so many why, there's so many layers of values, the animal, how animals are treated. Um, and then health. I mean, like there's so many of those things. And then, so you have somebody with a unique ability like chef Eric who can create like the most amazing waffle that is super, super, super clean has six to nine ingredients. When if you go look and like, you know, has a good uh, source of protein, 10 grams of protein, 16 net carbs, good quality carbs. Right. And then five grams of fiber. And then you go look at, um, I call, I'll tell you a funny story. I called up. So I have a couple buddies that train pro athletes and I called them up and I said, let me ask a question. Like, like, do you have your athletes? Like, do they train on high, super high protein, low carbs? And they're like, no. Okay. So what, what does that tell you, Jeremy? They need, we need carbohydrates to have energy. And there's actually studies and this is a little over my skis, but studies that show that, um, the best ways to lose weight is like a slower carb diet with good quality carbs that digest over longer periods of times, that don't suck up your energy, um, 
And so I called a, a, a nutritional expert here locally who consults with families. And I said, Do you, would you ever put a kid on a super high, high protein, low carb diet? And I think there's like one or two of, uh, exceptions possibly, which is like epilepsy and there's maybe one other uh, thing. But the answer was no. So I was like, okay, it started validating all the ticks on my box, right? And then I started testing with it myself and just noticed my clarity in my mind, my energy, uh, my patience with my, in my kitchen. It just was all better. And I'm not judging, I'm not, by the way, I'm not judging like, Everyone's got to do you, you know, it's all, it's all good, I guess. But there's certain things that started shifting and I got introduced to people like you got to, you know, check out the Rich Roll podcast. You check out uh, what they did with the Game Changers movie. Absolutely incredible. And then what Rip Esselstyn's doing, Jesse Itzler, you know, he, all these people, they all have, you know, these are all people you should know, you know. And why'd you go with ready-made? Because, you know, the average American, the average person spends less than four minutes. Um, the average person spends less than four minutes a day on breakfast. Something you'll pull out in microwave. Pull out 60 seconds in a toaster. I'm, some people put it in the microwave. Some people eat it cold, frozen. Some of my kids. I, I love taking these actually because I, I do like plant-based smoothies. Um, and uh, I'll create a smoothie. Put a little protein mix in there, put a um, waffle in there, add mm. my, all my different, uh, maybe a little cinnamon, a little bit of honey, organic honey, and uh, a few mm. other things, man. If you want to throw some greens in there, you can do that. I mean, you can do whatever you want, you know, and bam, within, if you want a little more texture to your uh, smoothie, you can do that with a wake-up waffle, you know. What's, uh, you know, you mentioned Dr. Zach Bush, Rich Roll, um, Jesse yeah. Itzler, Cohen, any other thought leaders that you look at in this space that, that people should, you know, that you actually do use to do research? You mentioned the, um, a couple, uh, the movies. What else, what are the resources? Well, yeah, great question. <clears throat> Cause I know we were going to do, we, we, there should be a podcast up on our wake up minute coming out with like the top 10 podcasts that I listen to. Um, I love, well, for, from an expert's perspective, you could find almost every single um, health expert that you'd ever want to listen to, to get uh, advice from on between Rich Roll and like Rip Esselstyn's podcast. I've listened to way more Rich's, by the way, just for full disclosure on that. So I can speak to that. Um, and um, it, it's a, it's a, it is an avalanche of learning. And, and there's, um, I think for people, if you're confused, first of all, I think um, I'm not a big proponent of fighting the diet wars. Like I, I just think, I think most people want simplicity, Jeremy. They don't want, they don't want like this, but they, do, they just don't want to be confused and they don't want to fail, right? And so one of the things, if you will well, take it all the way back to Wake Up Foods is like, one of the things is that this is a simple, simple ingredients filled with super high nutritional value. So, so I was like, man, this fits all the tenants that we're trying to accomplish. It's good for everybody. Um, so, I mean, I guess I love, let's see here. I mean, I think those are just good starting points. Let's sit in there. I'll, I'll, I'll create a list for you. Later. Yeah. I know, I'm, I know I'm forgetting people, so I apologize. So <laughs> I want to just first say, you know, it's always fascinating to get inside your mind because of, you know, um, if people don't know you, they should follow you and what you're doing. Um, and, you know, you wrote a book, Time Collapsing, one of my favorite books of all time. And you have a lot of amazing resources. And, and I think, you know, the interviews, I'm looking forward to listening to a lot of them because you bring out um, aspects in people and different, um, you know, different questions and different viewpoints in people. So check out, obviously, you know, the Wake Up Minute, but uh, wakeupfoods.com and any final words. Go ahead. Yeah, well, actually, let, let me just go back to like when you're asking me, like, who do I go to? Like, I, I think it's a fascinating to listen to people who are doing really cool things. Like whether it's physical fitness, whether it's entrepreneurship, what they're doing, they're actually doing like, so when you're asking me like, who do I listen to? Um, I'll listen to like 30 different podcasts and I'm seeking like, okay, what's that person doing that's inspiring and cool. And then if you back, then I like backtracking from there, 
because every good interview has probably resources mentioned, right? That's a little more like, so Ben Greenfield's another one, you know, Ben, Ben goes a little more scientific than, than, uh, I can sustain on some of his podcasts, but he's a plethora of, or, uh, you know, he's an avid, he's got so much information that's there. Right. So, I mean, I think that's, that's where I just want to clarify that. Um, and I also want to challenge everybody, like, instead of just listening to podcasts, go do these events, like go to 29029, go to 29029. Um, there's more amazing people that you don't know yet that are never going to be on a podcast that are out there just like me and you trying to do our best. And um, I think that's super, super important, you know? So everyone check out wakeupfoods.com and uh, you try all the flavors. Food? Are you looking for, are you trying to wrap this? I think Jeremy's trying to wrap me up, everybody. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, do you got a time? I'm like, no, we don't have a time thing. Um, here's what I would say, okay, am I wrapping this up? I'll, I'll wrap this up this way. Um, when I left college, my goal was to be a motivational speaker. Like, I really thought I was going to be the next Tony Robbins. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to go. And then I studied under Jack Canfield, who's the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And then I wrote a couple books and, you know, never found, I mean, a couple of my businesses did really well, but like, never found those, the book thing, motivational speaker thing. I, I noticed my values shifted to where, you know, with seven kids, I want, I want to be home. I don't want to be traveling, speaking. I didn't make that a priority, right? And so um, the food business or the wake up foods, my goal, personal goal is if we can inspire people to be their best selves and whatever that might be, that's a pretty big win right? There's other wins on top of it, probably a different, different podcast. But I would just say to everybody is like, hey, look at, you know, um, if not now, when are you going to do it? And it could be anything. It doesn't, you don't have to go buy our product. Like you can go like, but everyone's got a thing that scares them that if they did it, it would make them, a, it, would, it would open up a part of you that um, um, would just, open up doorways that you just aren't experiencing now because you either you aren't doing it yet or you're ready for another level of it. So I would push people to say, whatever you think, whatever scares you a bit, go do it. Whatever you feel uncertain about, keep pressing forward because the distinctions are not in knowing. The distinction is in the discovery of finding out and knowing, meaning you got to push through a lot of uncertainty. And this could be like 2 a.m. side of a mountain. I met Colin O'Brady at, I think it was 1.30 in the morning at the top of a mountain in Connecticut at Jesse's event. And I was in my head sitting there going like, man, I don't know. I think I'm ready to turn in, go, go back to my tent. And small discussion, me and Colin had a Colin said to me, he's like, well, I think you're going to feel a lot better if you get one more in for tomorrow. And he was right. So, you, but we're kind of bound now by that one event and he was there when I kind of needed somebody, but I would have never been there. Like, you know, you just can't get that relationship virtually. Um, and I don't know, I got to step into that uncertainty. Uh, life is found in like in this place where we just go and, and do things and not living like TikTok, like not living the traditional life. And my wife and I talk about this all the time, like, you know, with seven kids, structure, structure makes things life easier, right? And we're pretty unstructured, kind of easy. Like we're, like we are a little bit more lax than probably most people, but we're still structured. Kids go to the normal school. We have them I mean, in sports, you know? Um, but we do wake up a lot and we're like, hey, how do we make life more of an adventure for ourselves? And I think it's one of our top priorities right now. Like, how do we get out of this TikTok nine to five, even though our life isn't nine to five, but like, you know, we're just doing what every other traditional family does. And I'd like to challenge people that, um, you know, you can look on Facebook and Instagram and look at other people doing cool things, or you can start planning to go do amazing things. I hope, I hope inside your bag or inside your, uh, your, your luggage or inside your cooler, is a thing of uh, wake up waffles or any of our other products. Um, and, uh, and we help be a little bit of a, a guide during that phase, you know? So that's how I'll wrap it up, you know? That's a good wrap up.
Thanks, Ed. Always a pleasure. I really appreciate it. All right, brother. You're the best. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 